to you live from Newegg Studios in Southern California. This is Newegg Now. I'm Trisha Hirschberger. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, and we're here every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, live on the YouTubes, the Facebooks, and all over Newegg.com. <laughs> uh, back again this week, but with a regular-sized episode. Yes. Regular, Not normal. Not the six-hour marathon we did last week. I, that was <laughs> crazy fun, though. So last week we had the super size, super special Intel Gamer Days edition mm -hmm. of Newegg Now. If you missed all the excitement last week, the co-hosts, the water cooling, the uh, say, hashtag save the fan. Oh my god, that was so funny. Which was amazing. <laughs> uh, you're going to want to go back and watch the archived live stream video, all six hours of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because uh, it was great. We it was fun. really fun. So just to recap, Gamer Days is an event brought to you by Intel with fantastic deals on PC hardware and systems and special events throughout the first weeks of September. It's actually still going on for a few more days, yeah. so you can still take advantage of those special deals by going over to newegg.com slash Intel Gamer Days. So on the show last week, we were joined by Lee Mat uh, Matchin. 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 Yeah, Ooh, Lee Matchin. Almost, almost got that wrong again. Uh, <laughs> Lee from Intel to tell us all about the Gamer Days and Intel's commitment to gaming. So make sure you go back and check that out mm -hmm. if you want to hear more about how Intel views the PC gaming market in 2018 and beyond. Yeah, and that was just the start of the fun. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in building a gaming PC, then you're going to want to make sure that you watch JJ from Asus and Logan from Tech Syndicate yeah. sharing their expertise on the subject for two full hours. And then, of course, to end the show, Logan <laughs> was joined by Mike from Thermal Take, who did some awesome live demonstrations about the wonderful world of water cooling. When he just gutted the pump, I mean, like... It, that that it was actually inspiring. like inspiring. That actually gave me some goosebumps. It's like, oh, he's just, oh, he's just doing that. Okay, very cool. Yep. And of course, MSI was in the studio too. <laughs> they came from across the street. From this, I didn't know. Yeah, they there were official our neighbors. Is, Who knew? Is, is right across the street. I should drop mm -hmm. off some banana bread. Um, so they came over to tell us about their lineup of Intel-powered mm -hmm. gaming laptops and desktops, small form factor PCs for the living room. Mm -hmm. uh, you can watch all of the live stream archived on the Newegg YouTube channel or by going to newegg.com slash Intel Gamer Days. Yeah, so that was a recap of last week's show, but coming yeah. up on today's show, we have Seagate in the studio to share details on their new 14 terabyte drives and what a good network attached storage setup can do for you. And then we'll be diving into Spider-Man on the PS4. I obviously got the memo, <laughs> that's what we were gonna play today and dress I, I tried to find, I, I mean, I, I put on a blue shirt. It, I like it. So. We're color coordinated. A today, red watch. And I like red it. watch, blue shirt. Yeah, we are ready Spidey. to do the Spider Man's things. Uh, it really seems like everyone has been talking about this game since it came out on Friday. And I feel like everyone's been talking about this game for the past like two years. Oh, uh, yeah. It, since this game was even it's starting to be a thing that people would know about. Um, and it's amazing. How, how so refreshing it's, is it's it that we've been talking it out for two years and then hands on playing it? So few games really feel like they kind of live up to that that anticipation, that hype, and this yeah. one totally lands I mean, like what I love about a good franchise video game. Swinging around the city is pretty awesome. It was really good. We're gonna do that later. We're today gonna do on the that. Show. So of course, Newegg now is also all about the deals. Mm -hmm. That's what makes our show so special. Head on over to newegg.com/newegg now. You'll find all of the limited time savings you can take advantage of as part of the show today. These deals just went live mm -hmm. at the top of our show, and they'll only last through midnight tonight mm -hmm. or while supplies last. So before we go any further with today's show, we should probably take a look at some of those deals. I have the page on my laptop right here, and we can talk about some of the things that you will see when you head yeah. over to that uh, website zone. Let's go through some of those deals right now. So let's kick things off with this high-end gaming PC from Asus, the GD30CI. This is a high-end gaming rig with an i7-7700 CPU, a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, and a unique white chassis with customizable front panels, a detachable headphone hanger, and EMI shielding. This is a great option if you're looking for a pre-built gaming PC that can play just about anything. Yep. And you can pick it up right now for $100 off, along with a $50 gift card that you can use later. Hey. Uh, or if you're more of an MSI fan, then you might have seen the beautiful Infinite X gaming desktop on last week's Intel Gamer Days stream. If you missed out, you are in luck because we have an 8th Gen i7-8700 version with a GTX 1070 Ti GPU available right now for $50 off and free shipping. 
The RGB lighting on this case looks fantastic, as we saw on last week's show. It's just awesome. And then if you're trying to game on the go, we have some great gaming laptops for you, like the AMD Ryzen 7 powered GL702ZC with a high refresh rate panel and a Radeon RX 580 graphics card for $100 off. Woo. Or if you'd rather go Intel and NVIDIA, you can check out the ASUS ROG Strix Hero Edition. I'll see if I can pull up that puppy right here. Perfect. Hey, look at that. I can do two things at the same time. Uh, so this is uh, with an Intel 7700HQ CPU, a GTX 1060 GPU for more than $200 off. Ooh. If you're looking for portable power, head on over to the Newegg Now page for all of those great laptop deals. Yeah. And if you already have a build and you're looking to upgrade, check out the single fan gigabyte GTX 1080 GPU. I'll see if I can pull that puppy yeah. up right there. That's, uh, that's very pretty Ooh. also, look at that. So uh, always uh, graphics cards, always popular on Newegg now. You can get this powerful piece of hardware for $40 off while supplies last only on Newegg.com slash Newegg now. So we'll check out more of today's deals later on in the show, but right now we need to talk about Apple Ta -ta. and what they announced at their event yesterday on Wednesday, because if we <laughs> don't talk about it, uh, my co-host probably isn't going to be able to get through the rest no, of the show without his head exploding. So Juan, you streamed your live reactions. Yeah. I talked over the Apple keynote for two hours. So it was- I mean, that's a lot of talking. There were a lot of emotions, Okay. a lot of feels, um, a lot of big aspirational claims and product branding names uh -huh. on things that don't necessarily pan out for real world specs and comparisons and, I think um, from all of the tweets that I put out yesterday too, <laughs> there's definitely been a lot of discussion, not on what the phones are, but what you don't get anymore. And for how much? And for how much. So a thousand dollar phone that no longer comes with a, a $10 headphone dongle in the box feels not great, but then it supports fast charging, but you don't get the fast charger. You right. have to spend more on that. Right. If you have a MacBook as your primary computer and you ever want to connect your phone, you have to buy a different cable than what comes in the box because mm -hmm. they got rid of the USB ports on most of their MacBooks. Of course they did. And so when we get to a trillion dollar company that's really living the dongle life, this is just a sentiment that seems yeah. to be resonating with people in my social media about phones that are now thousand dollar tier products because that's really what we're looking at for mm -hmm. Apple as a flagship. The, the iPhone XS, XS Max, 999 and 1099 starting prices 10 and they go starting. north from there My. and then oh. so there also is this this commentary in the market where we look at the iphone 10r so hey you don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a phone mm -hmm. 750 that's that's a pretty good <laughs> a budget buy price. But now, now what apple mm -hmm. is doing is they're, they're they're initiating a conversation where that's now their budget and it kind of puts the psychology on watch for companies like Samsung and LG. Oh, it does. And uh, so Juan and I were actually talking about this a little bit off camera. And full disclosure, Juan and I started our friendship really bonding over, over our mutual love of Android and disdain for things Apple was doing. <laughs> just to put that out there. Yeah, in case um, you couldn't tell, I but was being measured. I used to, back in the day, uh, have a day job where I worked for Samsung. Yeah. And it was very much so the philosophy and the company was very aware that in the world, if you price your flagship, your high-end product at a more budget conscious price, automatically consumers that may not be as spec savvy are going to start equating things of equal price points. So saying, you know, if this tablet costs seven fifty and this tablet costs a thousand, well that's the better one. People are going to assume the one thousand yeah, dollar right tablet it's must be the better one because it's more expensive. Yeah. So raising prices to match each other is a is a business strategy that makes you more competitive. And, and it the works only, better than it should. Well, usually uh, business to business competition works out better for the consumer. Yeah. But when it comes to the price wars, that's the one place where the consumer really loses out. Because so. I would also lay this criticism in that same in the, mm -hmm. that same tactic, the difference between a Google Nexus phone mm -hmm. and a Google Pixel phone really wasn't severe. Right. But Pixel phones came out of the gate priced much, much higher because right. they were making an obvious competitive stance against Apple. I'm putting there in their site. So this, this not necessarily just for the iPhone, 
iPhone is not my jam. It's not. But and, they, and I know people in my circle of family and friends who I recommend Apple products to right. because of the ecosystem. 100%. But it makes me very anxious for the next year of smartphones. A Galaxy S10, we know Samsung's going to go all out for their 10th iteration of the Galaxy. Right. Now are we going to see the smaller Galaxy priced more competitively, aka higher, uh, to match the $1,000 smaller iPhone XS. And that makes me right. very nervous about the state of mobile electronics. As it should. Was there anything they announced at the Apple event that you were excited about? Actually, the improvements to Apple Watch. Okay. Because uh, you, you've, you've been doing a little work uh, checking out what Qualcomm has had to say about mobile processing. And right, so, with their SDWare 3100 launch that just happened yes. earlier this week. So, so this is obviously a segment that consumers are still taking seriously, even though mm -hmm. tech geeks have written off smartwatch. Oh, smartwatches are dead. And yet this product, is, this product line is still growing. Like this segment right. is still growing and they're still selling. Um, series four, the Apple Watch Series 4 makes some very impressive moves for your smartwatch companion device. Mm -hmm to contribute to an overall discussion of health and lifestyle. Yeah. So when you can do not just heart rate tracking, but the ECG mm -hmm. built into the crown for better granular data, that's something that makes me really envious. I'm probably never gonna sport an Apple Watch because I'm never gonna use an yeah. iPhone as my daily driver, right. but those are the features that I wanna see come over to Android Wear and to Galaxy Watches. Very cool. I think that actually moves the needle on that discussion. Very, very cool. All right, so moving on from Apple, one of the <laughs> biggest topics in the gaming world this week was the release of Marvel's Spider-Man. It's producing a ton of hype and strong reviews all around. And of course, it's a PS4 exclusive. Yep. The PS4 has had a few of these really highly rated exclusive titles, like God of War, which is definitely a contender for Game of the Year this year. They're just yeah. killing it. On it's huge. I, well, and uh, like I love this. God of War and Spider Man, strong contenders strong for games contenders. of the year. So, yeah. uh, with that in mind, it's a good time to check in on one of those classic, never ending debates in the gaming world. What do the different platforms, PC and the various consoles, offer gamers in 2018? Oh man! So I'm gonna pull uh, up. A, I'm gonna pull up this poll here. I think we can throw it on my. Pull up, yeah, screen. pull up the poll. So we're not particularly interested in going over the same old arguments that we've all had about a bajillion times before. Yeah. This is Newegg, after all. So our <laughs> official stance is the PC is the best gaming platform. Period. period. End of story. Um, that's why I get so upset about Sony exclusives. Anyway, <laughs> if you disagree. <laughs> Please let us Sorry. know in the chat on YouTube or Facebook, <laughs> but you'll be fighting an uphill battle. Uh, so where the conversation actually gets really interesting is That's when you great. start weighing the merits of the different platforms against one another. And Newegg's Game Crate site actually had a nice way of doing this with a Twitter poll that they have been running this yeah. week. Yeah, so the reality is if you're serious, serious, legit serious about gaming in 2018, it's very likely you own more than just one platform. Mm -hmm. So prices have been coming down consistently both on the PC and the console side of the equation. And this console generation is a few years old at this point. So there's been a lot of opportunity for people to pick up a second platform and developers know what to do with this. Obviously, you look at God of War, they're, they're extracting as much pretty out of that hardware oh, as they yeah. possibly can. Oh, yeah. So uh, l l let's go back to that Twitter poll because what we did instead of it just being PC versus was we're assuming you probably are a PC gamer if you're a fan totally. of Game Crate and Newegg content. So what is your companion? Is it PC and PS4, PC and Switch, mm -hmm. uh, PS4 and Switch, right. PS4, Xbox One? And so we put out this poll and overwhelmingly the, the winner so far is PC plus uh, PlayStation 4. And I'm sure that's because of the killer Sony exclusives that yeah. have been coming out. But yeah, so that's the question that Game Create asked. If you could have two and only two gaming platforms right now in 2018, what would it be? Um, so is that is that your setup at home? That is not my setup at home. What is your uh, setup at home? My Go setup on. at home, yes. I uh, <laughs> am primarily a PC gamer, as I've said many times before on this show. I have that in my gaming room, AKA office. And then downstairs in my living room, I have an Xbox, oh, an Xbox okay. One. Uh, so I like having that compatibility, which I know is not necessarily the most popular combo okay. because uh, controller compatibility, play anywhere That's titles. Good. There's a lot of different things you can do between those two. Um, but really I could 
get a small form factor PC to have in my living room that. and be equally as happy. Um, and then I also have a Nintendo Switch. That was going to be my so, gotcha question. Yeah, okay. I also have a Nintendo Switch for gaming on the go. So I would, I would say if I had to limit it down to two, for me it would be PC and Switch. That, One. That, okay, so that was, that was going to be my gotcha mm -hmm. question, though, is do, yeah. do you use the Switch more than you use your Xbox? And so probably, uh, or you would be able to <laughs> if you wanted to whittle it down. Uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, I use my Xbox One mostly as a uh, as an all-in-one media console, which so is it why could it really was named just be the a small One. Um, I, I game on my Xbox One very rarely because I'm always gaming. If I'm home, I'm always gaming on my PC, um, unless it's like a party game, like a Jackbox right. party pack, and I have people over and we want to be in the living room and not crowded <laughs> in my office, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, other than that, if I'm not in my office, then it's a switch. It's for a me. switch. How about you? So, so I'm PC and PlayStation Four. Okay. And this you is going. Have that. This is going back to. So, okay. How much I love my wife, Marie, because she needs a game console for work. She needs one. She does. Well, she She's can legit. we say where she works or not really? We probably okay. shouldn't. She works, she at, works a, at a video, video game games publisher place. at a place that makes <laughs> video games. Um, but she was actually kind of creeped out by Connect. Our, our whole oh. console strategy stems from she just didn't want... We, remember you could buy the Kinect privacy cover? <laughs> <laughs> I, or, I mean, save yourself the money and just throw a washcloth over well, it? I was going to say, like, I'm sure there was probably something nicer on Etsy that you could have picked <laughs> up, too. Um, but that sort of colored the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. What's funny is some of the nostalgia, like Crash Bandicoot coming back as a revival game mm -hmm. at PlayStation, the Spyro the Dragon is going to be on PlayStation, God of War, Spider-Man... And when we had Creative on to talk about their l new little sound blaster, yeah, it does. It, it you, you plug in a USB cable and you have this monster headphone it's amp awesome. for your console mm -hmm. that works exactly the way that they described it. You plug in yep. a USB cable and it's done. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm probably now 6040 PC gaming and PlayStation 4 again. Wow! Totally revived my living room gaming strategy over this last year. Split, uh, and your reason for that being split between external audio right. and Sony exclusives? Well, and, and having, having audio support that rivals <laughs> my desktop, because I've got recording gear plugged into my desktop, but mm -hmm. then a couple titles that they're PlayStation exclusive, that, that exclusives category of games on the PlayStation has been drawing me back to some console gaming lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's, I, I, every time I see something coming out as an exclusive, I'm like, Oh. And you're not going to make it available for PC? No. Like, even if it's like six months or a year later? <laughs> no, just like not nope. at all? Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. Um, there was a surprising amount of love in the replies on Twitter for the PC and Xbox One combination. I know no, egg, no one here at Newegg expected for that to happen. Um, but, of course, like I was saying before, with that pair, you get the benefits of Play Anywhere titles yeah. where you can enjoy games on both PC and console without needing to buy them twice. And in some cases, your progress even carries over from one yeah. platform to the other, which is really nice. Um, yeah, Game Creek didn't even include the PC Xbox One pair as an option. Yeah, that was like the Because you can only candidate. have four options in Twitter polls, and you don't really uh, add much in the way of exclusive titles with this pairing, <laughs> which is what everyone was thinking of. But it clearly has its passionate defenders. I'm, I'm with you. I was really surprised. I really mm -hmm. thought that PC and Switch was going to take the top spot with yeah. the PlayStation 4 coming in second. Because I'm almost always wrong. <laughs> so, like, I have a PC and a PlayStation 4, and I'm really happy with that combo. That's obviously what people are going to vote against. So I thought it was going to be PC and, and Switch. PC and Switch. Where are all my Octopath Traveler friends at, okay? Right? Um, Get in that poll vote. No, I mean, and, and just the, the simplicity of being able to travel with a Switch yeah. as opposed to traveling with a gaming laptop, which for some people may be rather hefty. Although I'm going back and playing Max Payne on my phone, and it's not bad. Great. You're not going to advocate for gaming phone over Switch, are you? No, no. Okay, great. Just making sure. Um, so while we've been discussing all this, I'm sure that you out there watching have thoughts that you would like to share. So yes, sound please. off in the comments on YouTube or Facebook, and we'll be checking in on that chat throughout the show. And we might just read some of what you have to say a little bit later on. Yeah, we probably will. So for now, uh, we're going to jump to a quick video, but we're going to be right mm -hmm. back to talk about uh, to talk to Seagate Ooh. about their new giant. 14 terabyte hard drives. All right. So come on back. Check it out.
Welcome back to Newegg Now. So, whether you're talking about games or media, the files we need to store are bigger than ever these days. And at the same time, we're demanding more in terms of speed and accessibility from those files. Yeah. So a good storage solution can make your home computing and entertainment setup much better and much more efficient. So here in the studio today to talk to us about all things storage, we have Seagate Senior Sales Representative, Hernan Lopez. Welcome, Hernan. Thank you, guys. Thanks show. for having me. So uh, to start things off, uh, just we, we ask this of all of our guests. What is your job title at Seagate? What do you do for Seagate? Well, primarily sales. Um, I work with our partners, our NAS partners, mm -hmm. as we have listed here. Um, Some very pretty boxes on the table right Very, now. very pretty yeah. boxes, very pretty <laughs> boxes. So in most of, most of, so basically a lot of our, we call NAS ecosystem partners, uh, like the ones we have listed here, QNAP, Synology, um, Asset Store, Buffalo, Drobo, those guys, and not only providing them with drives and solutions, but at the same time working with them to make sure that the drives are compatible and are working very well within their systems. Mm. So, and working with them. And so I travel sometimes with them doing expos and conferences and working with them, also creating solutions uh, with them for their customers as well. So, so like a, a typical day for you is travel, wine and dine, mm -hmm. talk about some cool <laughs> hardware, travel again. Travel again. <laughs> You're just all over the place. That's, yeah, that's about it, yeah. Excellent. Well, for our viewers at home who uh, maybe have not somehow heard of Seagate before. Can sure. you just give a very broad overview of what Seagate's best known for? Most definitely. Um, well, it, since I think it was 1978, 79, mm -hmm. uh, Seagate has been um, uh, in the data data storage industry. Um, and ever since, I mean, we've, we've created um, uh, hard drives and some of the best hard drives in the industry. We've come a long way. Um, and. Uh, and it's been a it's been a long road for technology and mm -hmm. storage, as you can see, as we continue to grow. And here we are. We've we've fought through everything, and the dust has settled, and and great products are out. So I want to jump right in because um, we were teasing it and what you're here to talk about. Sure. Um, this is an exciting number to put on a hard drive. Yeah. This mm -hmm. this type of storage storage density. Can you like let's just start off. Uh, what what can you tell us? about these new drive options that Seagate is, uh, is uh, revealing. Yes, definitely. So what we're looking at today is our Iron Wolf uh, Pro and our Iron Wolf drives. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are built for NAS systems like the ones we have listed here. We also have our Barracuda, and those are desktop drives. Okay. So now in your PC, you can have a 14 terabyte drive in just your PC alone. So you can imagine, I mean, it's great, it's great for storing everything, yeah. right, in your PC. The same thing is as a, as a NAS system, to be able to put these drives um, within a NAS system like this. Now, the new Iron Wolf is a NAS drive, and that's mm -hmm. network attached uh, storage yeah. drive for those of you who do not know. Um, but can you take us through the basic applications of a NAS setup and maybe why someone would want one? Yeah, definitely. So as you can see here in the NAS, it's a very unique system, as, as you can see here in this one as well. These, these actually hold these hard drives that we have here. So when you do buy a NAS system, um, you can, it either comes with, with the Seagate drives or without, right? Yeah. And the, that's a great thing because you pick and choose the drives. And you pick it depending on what size you need. It can be right. one terabyte or two, three, four, all the way to 14. So it's up to you on how much storage you need. And that's a great thing, right? Because you can kind of build to suit your own needs. Same thing with each of these NAS systems. They're all unique in, every, in, in a lot of different ways. The interfaces, they can be uh, 10 gig, right, interfaces. They can be one gig, like your home users. Yeah. And they can be Thunderbolt as well as well as USB-C3. So there's a lot of things that, that goes on in NAS selection. And so where we come in is you're gonna get yourself a, a, a good NAS system and you're definitely gonna need a hard drive to it. Now the difference between, the main difference between a, a DAS and a NAS, a DAS being the external hard drive you connect to your PC. Yeah, it's a USB cable then. Right, like that one sits what we call on the edge or the outside of your PC. It's, it's not accessible via network. Where this sits in your network, it's connected to a network system where or switch where you can access it via your home or anywhere in the world as long as it's yeah. online. Yeah. So, I mean, we've, we've had some conversations with other manufacturers too mm -hmm. about different storage solutions. Um, the, the whole idea being a multiple user drive too. Mm -hmm. uh, increasingly, we're seeing the digital lifestyle kind of permeate through the entire family yes. where it, it made a lot of sense. You had the one family PC, you'd plop one giant hard drive right mm -hmm. next to it. Everything was great. Yeah. You might have had dial up internet, you know? <laughs> like that, so, so from Seagate's perspective, are we seeing those trends change where these in the past, even just a couple years ago, 
were largely overall considered corporate or small business mm -hmm. or you know some sort of professional solution. Are they starting to make that transition over into consumer? Or has cloud kind of obfuscated some of the conversation about yep. data mobility or data backup? Sure. And that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, in the last segment, you were talking about phone, phones and phone technology, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about the phones and the quality of the pictures you're taking on yeah. your phone and how many pictures you end up with at the end of the day or on the weekend when you're with your kid at Disneyland, right? Oh, and not even photos, like 4K photos videos. Photos and right. videos yeah. and you yep. write videos. Where are you gonna put that stuff, right? right? And that's just one phone. How many phones? Are, do we have in our homes, right? Between our kids and our families and our family yeah. members, where are you going to put all that stuff? I have three under the table right now. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, that, so it, you do. And so that's where these come into play, where you can get all this information, all this data, and put it safely within, within one system. So, I mean, where else are you going to put it, right? And then, not only that, these are RAID systems. So they're, they're in a series or in a configuration which we call RAID, mm -hmm. right? And so the RAID system does is, for example, it's in a series, so if one of the drives fails, you can actually take this out. You can actually take the drive out while it's running, yeah. replace the drive, and continue using the system, right? So there's always that, there's always that thing as well. So that's, what, that's why these are so important. Um, because if it, any of these drives fail, you can hot swap it out, put another one in, and continue working. So without losing any data. Without losing right. any data. Right. right. So that's really So important this is well. a cloud system you get to control. Yes, your own personal cloud system. That's what I was yeah. going to say. It might seem like an overly simplistic comparison, but a mm -hmm. lot of people are very familiar with having their phone auto backup photos or something yeah. like yeah. that mm -hmm. to some type of cloud storage that you pay maybe a monthly fee for, something like that. But this is your very own right. type of cloud storage. That you control yourself. That is correct. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. Um, now, I know uh, Juan has actually played around with having some network attached storage oh, yeah. at home. A lot of people think of this as something maybe for small businesses only, but we're moving away from that. As yeah. technology advances and becomes more affordable, this is something people can have in their home experience. So can you tell oh, us yeah. a little bit what it, that's been like for you? Well, no, I mean, like the thing that sold sold my wife, I, I, this is just going to be a Marie a episode of Newegg now. Hey. Um, <laughs> what, what, what sold Marie was like showing her, there's an app on your phone, so there's another app you need to manage. Mm -hmm. So already she was a little skeptical yeah. about that. But she walks in, second she's on Wi-Fi, all of the photos that we just took of our daughter at the zoo are being backed up being to a, a, a series of hard drives underneath our desk. Mm -hmm. Now. I've had some not so great experiences with the actual enclosure mm -hmm. that my hard drives are in. So sure. I've been yes. a little cranky about that. And if mm -hmm. you want to help a, a struggling YouTuber out with some uh, uh -huh. other pretty boxes, <laughs> I've <laughs> Wink, wink. Um, but no, I mean, like the, the, uh, the security aspect of it, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us are becoming a bit more security conscious. Yeah. Um, cloud is basically one of these on someone else's computer. Someone else's. And you're uploading to that other solution. Mm -hmm. So I think. It, it, I've, I've found some difficulty in getting this kind of conversation out among some of my family and friends mm -hmm. because it's like another thing they have to manage or it might be kind of complicated or kind of scary. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who are in charge of the support or you know, replacing something if a drive goes down. Right. But overwhelming me from my personal experiences, even with a very cranky enclosure, mm -hmm. this has well um, uh, exceeded my expectations because yeah. I'm using it for professional use. Mm -hmm. Like I've got archival video going back so years much video. that I can pull up at a moment's notice and work directly off of yeah. my NAS. Definitely. And at the same time, it's also backing up family mm -hmm. memories and photos and videos and things like that yep. too. Yep, yep, no, definitely. And we certainly, we, we've, I think probably the last four years, four or five years, we are, we've started to see that change mm -hmm. in where users are utilizing it. And you're right, these were originally built for businesses, yeah. right, for businesses, but we're starting to see a huge influx of consumers using these. And because of the, and I just mentioned, because of all the data that, that we're creating and consuming, right? Yeah. So you got to put it somewhere, and it's it it's not by it's by it's by, it's not by choice. It's by necessity, mm -hmm. right? That we have to do this, right? Right? And we're, and with this, it's one of those things where you're not tied or bound to anything. This is yours, right? This is yours. You're not tied to having the internet or or your your you know your your Wi-Fi connection <laughs> or your connectivity or your provider. To say, okay, I'm gonna load, I'm gonna upload this this five minute 4K video or 6K video. I'm gonna upload it to the cloud, and you're sitting there wondering, well, I, I can't leave because it's okay. it's still uploading. I have to leave my phone and and go. Right. You know. And so with this, it's, it's not that case because it's on your network, and so you're you have full control of this. Yeah. You have full control of this, and if anything happens to it, and again, if if someone's gonna target, if someone's gonna target, you know. Uh, um, um, 
a, if, yeah, uh, it's not so, going to be, someone's going to target uh, uh, an intrusion. Yeah. It's not going to be a, ho a home, a home user, user. Right. Right. <laughs> right? It's going to be a large cloud corporation. And we see right. a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm. On news, et cetera. So this is, so it's a little hidden. It's, it's your well, own and thing. And from the security conscious point, like you would have some, like, some ability to sort of ferret out too. Oh, yeah. My my router would be mm -hmm. able to determine yes. Yes. intrusion also. Yeah, firewalls mm -hmm. and intrusions. Exactly. And these are all encrypted and yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, they're 100% safe. So specifically when talking about the Seagate Iron Wolf drive, yeah. can you highlight some of the things that make that particular line of drive special, the Iron Wolf Yeah, drive? definitely. And that's a good question. As I travel, people ask me that question. They're mm -hmm. saying, okay, well, what's the difference between the Barracuda you know, the barracuda yeah. and the iron wolf. Yeah. I mean, right? the barracuda is a very fearsome animal. It so. is, it is, it is. But a wolf will, you know. I mean, so <laughs> we have to have the fight. Iron wolf. Now, yeah, now yeah. is the barracuda going to fight an iron wolf in water, though? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I hope I'm sorry. That none of these, <laughs> I hope that none of these And vice versa. Are and vice versa. <laughs> so here's the difference is, is I mean, it's they're built different. I mean, physically, they're actually, they have different components and they're built different okay. in that the iron wolf actually has RV sensors built into it. So there's components, physical components built into this that will read any vibration or gyration that happens in the disc. And the reason is because a, a chances are you're not gonna get that in a, in, in a PC. Right. It's just sitting there, right? And it's just one drive inside the PC. But when you have several drives in it, right? And gyration, noise, anything that's that's in here. Well, and that they're all stacked together. And they're all like stacked this. together. Yeah. So, so the that quantum amplifies. Is amplified, correct. Yeah. So what the RV sensor does, it actually it actually senses that and it controls it controls the the actual uh, vibration nice. and the rotation of the actual. So there, could there be an argument for using something like that if someone wanted to have three drives in a PC? Or yeah, would definitely. The PC branding you, Seagate you, drive. You can. You okay. definitely can. There, without a doubt. There's no. I mean, that's the reason it was, it was built, and that's the reason it, it's, you know, it's for. And we do have a, a the pro version, right? And we do have the standard version. Okay. And the difference is a scalability, mm -hmm. in that the standard version will go to eight in a series of eight. Okay. Where the pro version will go up to 24. So wow. when you have large systems like this, bit larger racks. I mean, re we really are talking about like pro applications, yes. multiple yep. users mm -hmm. accessing so much data. the same. Yeah, and, and managing. Yeah. So so it's not so much that the standard version should feel like some kind of lesser solution. Absolutely right. not. No. Okay. No. It's just di it's just made for a different type of more of a a, a business class user right. um, than in a larger array of a rack system versus the, the standard. However, the Pro does work for this. If, if you're a power user, then mm -hmm. we highly recommend the Pro. If you're doing a lot of video, we recommend the Pro. And if you're, for example, in the media entertainment business, mm -hmm. and this is sitting on a dit cart somewhere, and you're transferring right. data, right? You're, yeah. uh, uh, at 6K, 8K video, oh, you're going to need a pro the, version. Yeah, like the, the small film sets that I'm on now, and the multiple cards that yep. are moving back and forth, and data in triplicate to mm -hmm. make sure you've got the shot. Yep. You're, you're throwing these raw things files. around. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Now, yes. I know we were talking about this a little bit before we started the show, but for our viewers at home, can you kind of go over the rescue service plan? Yep, that's a really good point. So the pro version, the pro version of our, of our, of our drive, it actually, if anything goes wrong with the drive, if anything fails, you, you can actually ship it back to us and we'll fix it free for, for, for two years okay. nice. since you purchased it. So, and that includes the shipping. So and these are shipped and these, we do it ourselves. So there, there are a lot of rescue services out there. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know where those drives go or who does it, but at right. least you know, you can rest assured that these, these Seagate drives will be fixed by Seagate if anything happens to them. And it comes two years with the pro version. And you can also add um, the, the same rescue service. You can add it also to any drive as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really nice that you guys fix it yourself instead of uh, outsourcing oh, yeah. that yeah. to a third party. You don't know party. where those are going. That's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. So reading a little bit about these new 14 terabyte drives online, mm -hmm. it sounds like one of the new features that you're debuting is something called two-dimensional magnetic recording or yep. TDMR. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and yep. why that matters? Yep. So what it is, it's it's the way the way the the head actually records. So it's kind of like an old record that has a right. reader. It really is like that. So <laughs> and the, and the disc is. I've like, been using that metaphor though because yeah, it's like that's what yeah, because well, you know we're in this era where uh -huh. a lot of people are looking at the performance of solid state. Yes. But solid state, I don't believe solid state is keeping pace with the quantity right. of information mm -hmm. that a lot of people, so it's Correct. still, I think the most popular configuration is mm -hmm. having a fast boot drive yep. and then yes. a big mm -hmm. storage drive. Correct. And now we're getting to some pretty incredible densities in the same form factor. Correct, yeah. correct. So 
So now, so we have the reader, right? We talked about the head reader, right? So what it is is we have dual head readers. Got it. That actually, it's checks and balances. Okay. It checks and balances itself while it's reading to make sure it's that- It's an error correct. Exactly, story. to make sure that everything is accurate because sometimes a single one might miss something. When you have dual, it's kind of double checking it and saying, mm -hmm. wait a minute, you didn't pick that up, why did I? So it kind of it kind of checks itself, and you're, and you're right as far as the boot sequence goes. And we have some systems like this that actually have it built in. So these are SSDs that you can actually put in here oh, to nice. use to boot right to use it for caching or use it for tiering, cool. which is really cool. And all, I, most of these can actually take SSDs as well for that type of speed you might right. need. You know, and, and Seagate has a great a great you know array of SSDs as well. But and, and then once you get that boot speed, you can get it on the larger 14 yeah. terabyte drives. So. Very nice. And these drives use helium in them, right? <laughs> yes, yes. What purpose does so, that serve in HDD design? Yeah, they, the, so <laughs> here's the concept, and it's actually pretty interesting. If you see, uh, for example, a balloon, right? You, yeah. you fill it up with helium, it, it kind of goes up. And the reason is because it's lighter than air, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is inside of these, they have helium inside of them that make it lighter than air in there. So there's less friction, less vibration. There's less, just basically friction. Everything's running a lot smoother and mm -hmm. faster. So it's actually a really interesting, interesting uh, so, but that's, technology. Because I would imagine the platters that we're dealing with mm -hmm. on a 14 terabyte drive, mm -hmm. how, how many actual disks in the CD changer are there? When a lot. We're, yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. So, so they are stacked. You're right. They, they are stacked. Because I remember when we got to two terabyte hard mm -hmm. drives, there was the, the sort of like um, the brick wall conversation. Yeah, correct. We're getting to the max physics. Can't spin them any faster. Right. They'll start shredding internally. Exactly. Data density. It's mm -hmm. way too fragile. Right. And then a couple years later, we had four terabyte drives. Mm -hmm. Correct. And correct. now we're in another order of magnitude terabyte. higher than exactly. that. Exactly. And you're right. And those are those are all in sequence and they're stacked. And that's what gives it that permission. I mean, we kind of look at it here, but we're talking on a on a very, you know, small scale. You know, I mean, these these are all very very small. So you look at it, and if even if you take it apart, you, it's really hard to tell. But you're right that there is. There is, uh, you know, plates, and they are, they all have density, and they all they all have air in between. Mm -hmm. And the lighter they are, the less resistance, and the less 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 uh, the smoother they run. So sure. yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great technology. So I, to kind of stray from some of our our talking points in the conversation that we had before we get on camera, what kind of conversations does Seagate have internally on like next gen, next mm -hmm. next gen, sure. like? Do we eventually walk away from this form factor when we need to look at increasing storage densities, or is there a limit that that we foresee? Because again, every limit that I've heard in the yeah. past, we've broken. We've, yeah. we've managed mm -hmm. to find a solution, and they do continue yeah. to grow. And even even in our labs, as we can, we do the same thing. We continue pushing the limits. And again, it's out of necessity. Right. Mm -hmm. It really is out of necessity. And we need to say, as in technology, because it, it changes every day. And so we need to evolve every day. You know, we can't stand around and say, okay, well, we're going to stay at 10 terabytes forever. Because, right. you know, because, I mean, these guys would love it because they would sell bigger, bigger array bigger systems, bays, right? Right, <laughs> right? The bigger array systems. So, but for us, it's different. For us, we're, we look three, four years down the line. Mm -hmm. Right, and we quantify what's going on now and the consumption and the creation of data and what is it gonna look like next year and the following year and the following year per user. And that's when we're kind of saying, hey, you know what? We need to up this, you know, we need to continue to grow. And again, it's out of necessity. Yeah. The invention is created out of necessity. It's it's mm -hmm. we're not bragging. This isn't about, you know, a thousand dollar you know. Right, yeah, you know, like, thousand I mean, dollar big, big numbers are fun to, yeah, yeah. to, to cart around. But it's but. but it's out of necessity that that these drives are created because we need them. And we definitely need it. And you, to think now, we talk about this now, just like you know, maybe a couple years ago, we were talking about the 10 terabyte and how yeah. great that was. Um, and the same thing's gonna happen. We, we look down the future, we're gonna be like, wow, remember that 14 terabyte <laughs> of course. came out? And then now we're at 20. <laughs> how quaint. Yeah, and we're now 20, yeah. so we definitely, we, it's not unusual. It is not something unusual. For us, because we live in this world, mm -hmm. those things are not, and what's coming is not unusual. Because well, I know the, in, in addition, it's it's. I, I think people have been taking for granted how much more stuff they actually yep. make. Mm -hmm. For um, sure. Because we share, you know, you, you throw up a photo on Instagram and you're like, okay, well, yeah, that was me sharing a, a piece of media, but like mm -hmm. the creation of that had multiple photos. You, there are a bunch that you want to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Whether or not people are actually going back to look at them, mm -hmm. I don't feel people always understand how fragile digital media Correct. really is. Like, yeah. I still have 
some hermetically sealed negatives from when I shot film just out of high school wow. that I could still make a print out of if I needed to yeah. today. Mm -hmm. The memory cards I had in college on some of the earliest digital cameras I had, I don't mm -hmm. even have readers for. Right, right. Anymore. Those big. Or like, like or smart, remember the, the like smart card, flat, uh -huh. really flimsy Ooh. plastic yeah. stuff too? So yeah. I mean, like, I, I don't even know where, right. like, how I would get that data right. back. So mm -hmm. that's gone. Right, right. Um, that's evaporated, let alone, you know, you're, you're just throwing everything onto mm -hmm. maybe a not properly cooled uh, right. hard drive that's been on your desk for 20 years, mm -hmm. <laughs> not 20 years, but right. for a number yeah. of years that Yeah, and we see, go poof. we see that a lot. So a lot of our customers, well, they'll say, oh, it's in my junk drawer. This is my junk drawer. What's in it? I don't know. It's got, right. it has four years of, four years of just you, you backing up my laptops. <laughs> sure do. Right, just backing up laptops and backing yeah. up computers and just everything's getting thrown in there. You know, rest assured it's in there. If you ever need it, you yeah. gotta go back and look at it. Where I mean, it could be documents, scan yeah. documents. I it could need be, that so bad. Yeah. We were talking about before mm -hmm. the show that I, I, I have towers, like PC towers, old PC towers used around my house as end tables that just have things <laughs> sitting on them. So I'm like, well, I might need something in that someday. And I never really got around to pulling stuff off of it. How embarrassing. Bad computer um, user. Yes, I, I, need, I need to get my tech life together. Um, but <laughs> Hernan, before we let you go, um, is there anything else that you want to tell us about what Seagate is working on right now or maybe what we should be expecting in the future? Sure, but like, you know, like I said, you know, and, and we've talked about, you know, us being, you know, a company that has, you know, for decades have, has been around and, and it's been, you know, its focus has always been on data storage, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue to be here for a long time. This is, I mean, this is what we do. You know, we don't pretend to be anybody else. So we're going to continue doing what we're doing good and keep, you know, and keep growing and fulfilling the need of data, you know, for consumers and, and for businesses, you know, throughout the world. We'll continue. You're going to see us continue being who we are and then continue to grow and grow and grow, you know, as, as I mentioned, consumers grow and as businesses grow. So, yeah, you're going to see us basically growing. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. Well, uh, Hernan, thank you very much for coming by to talk to us thank today. I, I, like, I'm always down to like, nerd out over yeah. big boxes full of hard drives, Definitely. so we'll have to have you back on soon. Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you for having me. Yeah. Okay, so if you would like to pick up <laughs> one of these Iron Wolf, dri Iron Wolf drives, easy do, for wait, me to say. Wait, do you say Wolf too? I try not to. <laughs> I, really, I thought it was because I was from Pennsylvania. Anyway, There's we'll an talk about L that in the later. word. Um, head on over to newegg.com slash newegg now. For the first 50 people who purchase those drives through the newegg now page today, you'll get a $25 newegg gift card mm -hmm. as a bonus. Basically free money for a future purchase on newegg. But supplies are super limited. Super limited. 50 people, so you don't want to wait on that. Yeah, so to give you a chance to learn more about the Iron Wolf in action, let's take a look at how you can use the drives with a Thunderbolt enabled NAS array from QNAP to Power 4K video editing. Just like the team does here at Newegg Studios. Let's take a look. Do it. We do a lot of high-end videos here at Newegg Studios. The less glamorous part of shooting videos is storing and processing footage. So when Seagate came out with their latest Iron Wolf NAS and NAS Pro drives in sizes up to 10 terabytes, we were excited. But the challenge of modern editing isn't just storage, but speeds and access. Enter two other big players, Intel's Thunderbolt 3 and QNAP's Thunderbolt 3 NAS array. Just a few years ago, a small video production facility needed a 10G Ethernet hookup with a closet full of drives. 10G still works well, but Thunderbolt 3 at 40G speeds is definitely next level. Seagate and QNAP just sent us a ton of drives to use for creating an ultimate 4K raw video editing studio. The idea is to combine 8 drives in RAID 0 to get the most performance. 4K raw footage needs roughly around 1700 megabytes a second. Speed 8 Seagate drives in RAID 0 should hit. But RAID 0 is all speed with no backup. That's why we have a second QNAP system with all Seagate drives to provide the redundancy. The Seagate Iron Wolf drives are premium drives for video editing or high performance storage. The Seagate Iron Wolf regular model has a 3 year warranty with 120 terabytes a year workload rate. The Pro model gets you a 5 year warranty and 300 terabyte workload rate. We can outfit our NAS with 80 terabytes of storage in a bread box. 
and that's at speeds well beyond an SSD, closer to NVMe SSDs that can handle 4K RAW natively. Seagate also sent us secondary drives to use for a backup QNAP array, RAID 5, which allows for a single drive to fail, unlike RAID 0 which has no failure backup. In RAID 5, 8 10TB drives will provide 70TB of storage instead of 80. Connecting it all is QNAP, a leader in the NAS and array game. The QNAP ITVS 1282T3 model is the latest in their line of ultra-premium NAS arrays. A normal NAS simply acts as network-attached storage, basically backup drives over your Ethernet. Ethernet speeds are pretty slow and better for long-term storage. The QNAP T3 model comes with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, four Ethernet, two 10G Ethernet, and five USB 3.0. This makes the QNAP a NAS, a drive array, and interestingly, a 10G adapter. Any PC connected through Thunderbolt 3 to the QNAP is able to connect to a 10G network. The QNAP also features four more 2.5 inch SSD bays and internal M.2 slots for adding SSDs as caching drives. We won't be testing that functionality out here, but it's easy to say this QNAP box with an i7-7700 CPU and 64 gigs of RAM is a serious monster PC in its own right. With QNAP, you get access to a massive number of programs for setting up complicated workloads. For Newegg Studios, we plan on running a triple system setup. Each PC has Thunderbolt 3. The fourth Thunderbolt 3 port goes to the QNAP arrays with the Seagate drives in RAID 5. Each of the backup QNAPs have Thunderbolt 2. We're using a StarTech Thunderbolt 2 to 3 adapter. While RAID 5 with Thunderbolt 2 is crazy fast, since we're doing redundant backups, speed is secondary to security. Overall, the Seagate IronWolf NAS drives with the QNAP Thunderbolt 3 NAS are a really compelling solution for the small video house looking to shoot 4K RAW or even up their normal workflow. Check out all these products and more on Newegg. Welcome back to Newegg Now. We've been talking about the best gaming platform, platforms to own in 2018 on today's show, so we wanted to check in, uh, see what our audience has to say. We've been getting some great replies to the, uh, to the Twitter poll that we put out on the, uh, the Game Crate Twitter account. Um, yeah, we've I've got, got a couple of the replies pulled up right now. Joshua Bats, at Bats Joshua, said PC and PS4 and Switch. Completely covered. covered. That's true. I mean that that would I feel pretty like much we're, have you covered. We're on opposite sides of that divide because you've got your Xbox, but you've got the Switch. I don't. I still haven't grabbed a Switch, but I've been rocking my PS4. Yeah. So. No, the Switch is great. Um, and I like like you hear me grumble about quite often. Sony has some amazing exclusives, and I'm always a little grumbly yeah. that I only a get little? to play them She's when I'm at work. Uh, yeah, I don't get to play them at home because. Not, not a Sony's man. How great is it um, that you just said that out loud? I, get I only get to play work. my PlayStation 4 games when I'm at work. I, totally. <laughs> Woe is me, right? Um, so, uh, speaking of the PC and Xbox One combo, though, Big Daddy Worm uh, yeah. at Worm Dog says, PC and Xbox One, because of the Play Anywhere titles, uh, allow for more flexibility, which is true. And I also saw another one in support yeah, of Justin that. Justin Crowder. From I Justin. I pulled him up too, yeah. At Crowder Dad. So PC and Xbox, the most legit option. I like this. So strong, I like this. Is, is strong uh, not, not mincing position. words. He's just, he's just coming out there to say, he's, he, he says it like yeah. it is. Um, uh, at Crowder Dad, I can use the Xbox app in Windows 10 to party chat, Play Anywhere titles. I mean, come on. No other combo offers so many features. The, the, the counter argument I would put out there okay. is there may be too much overlap though. So if you wanted the more diverse gaming experience. Well, yeah, and I saw some people actually argue that, that right. it's too redundant to be a PC gamer with an, with an Xbox, Xbox One because right. you're just getting the same thing twice. Um, so uh, that is an argument to be made as well. I, I'm putting that out there as the, the, the debatable you know, to have that conversation, not as, yeah, this is my stance. Right, no, for right. me, before Sony was like, we are the exclusive god that they've become <laughs> lately, um, I was like, well, I like my PC, so naturally I'm going to choose an Xbox, an Xbox. One because they have so many features that go right. together. That's what I was thinking. So I understand that line of thinking for sure because that's where I was a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, and I like this one from X with the write-in, the strong write-in. Hey, where's the option for the NVIDIA Shield since it's both a console and a streaming machine to play PC games? I like that there's still someone out there rocking the NVIDIA Shield. Represent. Hey. Do it. 
I haven't even seen one of those in I ages. Really, I really thought that like the whole game portability streaming thing was gonna take off bigger. Again, often I'm wrong about some of these technologies. Well, um, we're all just guessing. Yeah, I mean, just like I have no idea what the future really actually holds. Um, right? The uh, sod uh, hmm. actually we're supporting the the whole ecosystem overlap argument. Um, at Sir Sad Sod, PC plus Xbox One doesn't need to be on the yeah. list as Xbox games are on the PC. Get that so, hot bait going, I love it. Do you, think, um, do you think that that will be Microsoft's transition? Is to turn Xbox into more of a service rather than a box that lives under your TV? I mean, we're seeing that happen. Um, it, it, with their new, where you can rent the hardware now too. Right. Yeah, we're seeing that happen. I don't. Maybe that's where they would go. I, I personally would like to see Microsoft bring everything together and consolidate so that it is a more streamlined. And I don't and, think uh, instead of two separate divisions of the company and two separate things. And I think we've gotten to that point where retail outlets don't have as much power over the gaming ecosystem. I agree. Like I think we could have gone to game downloading on the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. But com major corporations still want to sell you a plastic clamshell with a coaster inside of it that well, you and walk some into. People like and some to people have really the like display that. Shelves. But if we can turn Xbox into a service, then that would make me really happy because it would be like Steam. Yeah, it's Game Pass. Do it. Yeah. I, so then I have my PC and my Xbox service and mm -hmm. my PlayStation when I want to play Spider Man. There you go. Uh, while we're talking about people's platforms of choice, remember that we always love it when Newegg fans share photos of their home battle stations. So we put out the call on Twitter and Facebook earlier this week, and we actually got some really cool responses. I don't know if you have any of those pulled up, I Juan. Let's need see. To, well, I, I opened for uh, um, the conversations. Give me one second. Vamp. Okay. Say something Perfect. interesting. Uh, so what we iPhone always are you going to buy? Don't even with me <laughs> at that. I hashtag Android for life, okay? Well, you know what? Hashtag Android for life, unless, unless Apple decides to become innovative again and okay. come out with something that completely knocks our socks off. Uh, I, I think that's totally fair. Like the OG iPhone. <laughs> then I would definitely love to check that out. Um, I, I, I would stray if Apple gave me really cool AR glasses. So you could play Galaga AR. Galaga <laughs> AR. That looked cool, but that I'm also cool. I'm also hoping we see that for for Google's AR platform too. So yeah. fingers crossed that that could come to a Pixel or a Galaxy. AR or Core or and AR Kit. You know. Okay, I got a few of these pulled up, so we can we can throw to my uh, my laptop. If okay, perfect. So let's look at some of your build out. photos. So this is from uh, Code Name Gumby. Uh, get yourself a setup that can do both Ooh. work and play CAD programs. Wow. Play some games on the weekends. Ooh. And I'm, I'm liking the dual monitor setup with yeah. his Xbox right under the monitor. Yep, there you go. Check that out. Get yourself a system that can do both. I love it. I, I like how clean the lighting is, too. That's it looks super beautiful. Simple. It looks beautiful. Oh, even rocking the, the, the lit mouse pad. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. So this is from Kyle Kelly. Here's my PC and console setup. GTX 1080 on the PC and a PS4 Pro, Xbox One S, Whoa! Switch, and PS3 going to the TV. Come on, Twitter. Open the photo. Oh, man. So that is um, that is like an everything you would ever need to game any game that you'd want to game. This is the why not both meme to the max. <laughs> to the Just max. Just take it all. Do do all. Do it all. Okay. So this yeah. is uh, from Curdy Bird. A dual PC plus uh, plus an Xbox One and a Switch. Oh, you must stream, man. That setup's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, and check out I mean, even yep. on his mic With arm mic and everything too. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, but his desk definitely looks a little like mine. Like a, oh, a little, like little, little cluttered? Cyborg-y and cluttered? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so uh, Curdy Bird, we both need to work on our on our cleanliness. I, uh, <laughs> I have been going through trying to get some of that old tech that I haven't used in years mm -hmm. cleaned out of my office. And because of that, my office is a disaster zone. I actually put it on my Instagram story yesterday how bad it looks because it, I was like, no one's even going to believe and it. And then there's some of stuff you don't want to like, you don't want to get rid of it. Oh, I, I mean, like, I'm so. the worst when it comes to hoarding old tech. I have so much old tech, just like a closet full of old tech. Like that... I, I could restock a Circuit City. Yeah. <laughs> they, yes. don't, they don't really exist anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but they would be the right generation of stuff to restock <laughs> right, a, Circuit to restock City. a yeah. Circuit City. I agree. Um, so this is from, from Lee, Ask Me Lee. Uh, we've got PC and PS3. Uh, on the left, a PS4 on the right, mm -hmm. Razer Black Widow Chroma Tournament Keyboard, Audio-Technica AT2020 mic, 
good microphone. I like that mic. Uh, Astro A40 with a Mixamp Pro, Elgato HD60S, mm. uh, an HP Envy Phoenix 850 uh, 065SE, and, the, and he's got the two terabyte PlayStation. You know. He's not going to be one of those uh, lightweight pro PlayStation 4 games no. like I am. Very nice. Uh, Audio Technica makes really nice mics. I, I the feel AT, like the AT2020 is a beautiful entry level large diaphragm yep. condenser. Mm -hmm. And uh, still, I think, holds a soft place in my heart for being one of the first USB microphones to properly take capsule size seriously. So there are other mics that Good have now stuff. caught up, and there's competition in this space now. But OG, Audio Technica. Good deal. Yep. Um, and then I've got one more here from White Bread ISU Ooh. with his Leon Lee and his vertically mounted gaming monitors. I like it. That's, that's it's really very pretty symmetrical. There, I like that. It's really pretty. Yeah. Super pretty. Really, really nice. Again, with the uh, RGB mouse pad. A bunch mm -hmm. of people here at Newegg rock that. And go, I mean, like, glass desk. That looks really sharp. It does look really sharp. I have a glass desk as well, and I will say the only thing I regret about it is how often I have to clean it. I have really cheap IKEA tables that have coffee rings all over them. <laughs> don't 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 do what I do. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Right. We'll 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 uh, we'll flip that out there. Okay. But thank you guys so much yes. for sharing those. Love these. Thank so, you. Um, if these gaming stations are inspiring envy or just respect, remember that you can find some great gear deals on newegg.com slash newegg now. If you haven't picked up a Nintendo Switch, today is a great time to do it <laughs> because when you order your Switch through Newegg now today, you'll get a copy of NBA 2K18 absolutely free. It's a $20 right. game. This is a special free bonus for finally getting the Switch you've had your eye on for months now. And then go Why? get Octopath Traveler because it's really, really good. Octopath Traveler. Um, you'll also find a banner on that new Egg Now page that will take you to a huge selection of games and gaming accessories. And you can save 50% off all of the items in that store only as a part of New Egg Now today. There are way too many options on that very long list for us to talk about all of them on the show. But uh, let's go ahead and call out some of the highlights. Yep, Far okay. Cry 5. Uh -huh. So one of the biggest games of the first half of the year. We played it right here on New Egg Now. Yep. Played it on New Egg Now. <laughs> and uh, you can get half off the normal price today only. Yeah, you can also save on Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Uh, I like to lovingly call it XCOM Lite, and that's for the Nintendo Switch. Nice. Uh, Persona 5, Revident, Resident Evil 7, Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein 2. Uh -huh. uh, so all of those great titles. Half off today, special for Newegg now. Yeah, and you can even get Need for Speed Payback and a racing wheel set from Thrustmaster for that same discount. Good times. There are some seriously great gaming choices to pick from. Just click that banner on newegg.com slash newegg now and start shopping. And speaking of great gaming choices, uh, I believe your Spidey senses are tingling right now. They are. Because I think it's time for us to actually play Spider-Man. Yay! So why don't you check out the trailer while we get ourselves set up and um, get into some web-slinging action. Mm -hmm. You're Spider-Man. Look, next time, leave the fighting to the pros. Okay, but what if there aren't any around? <laughs> Good one. The show's not over. Is there anyone left in New York who doesn't want me dead? A thin line between living and dying. I'm on the edge and I might just die. Next time you get in my way, I will not be so gentle. Girl problems again. Gotcha! Shut up! Okay, we're set up with Spider-Man here. We're ready to jump in. Um, uh, I'm letting Trisha take the wheel here. All right, I'm trying to remember now. I, only because I have, I have only trust taken him, slightly. But I've often wondered if they're in cahoots. <laughs> wow, Do it. I've never go, actually go, heard go, anyone go. say cahoots before. Momentum. Look, all I'm saying is, but, uh, Juan, I need to imagine what would have happened if so all those guys showed Very up little. and Spider-Man wasn't Another lost cause. Walk out all distractions Gunpla. and play Spider-Man all the 
So, um, unfortunately, from uh, from E3, that that was what he did. Spider Spider Man webs webs in like E3. It's up to be behind everyone sharing my Spidey cell. All units, 1010 narcotics sale reported but in progress. Even Officers just from the little bits that I've center. already gotten to dabble in. This is so satisfying. It really I is. I get the feel of this so well. And it makes me so happy. And we are so far away from the Uh so Yeah, I, uh, like I mentioned, I do not have a PlayStation at home. So I've only gotten to play this just a bit uh, this past Tuesday. But wonderful time, wonderful voice acting. It looks really, really cool. All um, units, there's a vehicle pursuit in progress. In City, Officers like, needed south like of house. Stark Tower, and you know, like it's, it's very, very cool. Well, it, it brings me back to some of the things that I really love about Sandbox games and giving us that good reason to explore. And it, just, it makes a lot of sense with a character like Spider Man that this is the way that we would want to interact with the Spider Man story. Um, Hell yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think, I, I honestly do believe, one, I'm just a Spider Man nerd, so I love Spider Man. Yes. But I genuinely do believe that this could be a strong contender to beat out a God of War for best game of you the year. You know, a lot of people are saying that. And I think a part of it is also just movie franchise sorry, games. Sorry, sorry, We've been in kind of dark days for movie franchises, oh, you know, turning them into games. Oh, it sounds wacky. Is what oh, are, are we having some problems with sound? We should be okay right now. Okay, so if anyone had uh, had issues with uh, with the audio, we, we were working on our side to sort that out. So hopefully we're we're back in and things sound uh, sound better. Uh, but yeah, I, I just. So Juan, as a huge Superman fan, uh, do you, or uh, as Spider a huge Spider-Man yeah. fan, I'm sorry, I'm playing and. I'm playing a game I've only played for like 20 minutes before. Go get <laughs> that objective. Screen, so uh, I know we're so far from the objective. I'm like, maybe we should just explore. Um, but do you have a favorite Spidey movie? An actor who played Spider-Man? So, um, I like. I think Tom Holland has really cracked it. I was the, gonna the, say we're totally in agreement on the, this, aren't we? The yeah. biggest, the biggest problem for Spider-Man has been the duality of the character. A hundred. In fact, we've probably had this conversation <laughs> before. <laughs> right. I a hundred percent could not agree with you more. Is I, I think we've gotten some great Spider-Mans who weren't awesome Peter Parkers. We've got, had some uh -huh. good Peter Parkers who haven't been great Spider-Mans. Right. Now, I, I think Tom Holland has landed that balance between. Uh, a youthful, nerdy enthusiasm, uh, that he's an intelligent character that we don't take his intelligence for granted, and who genuinely enjoys the aspect of being a, a, a helper in this city, who can quip and uh, who, who can uh, tell jokes really well. So that, that to me. Now, of course, close second, has to be Yuri the, Spi the Spider-Man <laughs> that you're playing right now. Is, is the, the Spider-Man has had a rich tradition of amazing voice actors, and the fact that I'm I'm actually friends with Yuri Lowenthal yeah. just is such a sweet homecoming. One of the first I, I, I've told the story before on New Egg now, but one of the all first all units, auditions I ran with Yuri Lowenthal was for a Spider-Man animated series. And I just over. over the almost 15 years that I've known him. This is a, a voice actor who has needed to be a Spider-Man. So to finally hear him in this role is, is uh, I, like, I get kind of emotional about it because, again, a decade and a half, I've been wanting to hear this guy's voice on a Spidey, and now I finally can. He does great. And uh, the other person that I totally love in this is Darren DePaul as J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, so it's good. So good in this. So good. I love him so much. It's, it works out Again, so perfectly. We can land these voice actor performances that rival some of the best on-camera incarnations of these characters. Come on, have something to swing on Oof. to. That's one of the fun things about the uh, web slinging in this. I don't know how much you guys play with it. Oh, but see, look, now I'm going to go into the park. <laughs> Nothing to grab onto. Nope. And, oh, oh, there we go. Gotta, we found something. Kind of find some light lamps and yep. trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably get back into the uh, city and the out of, what is this? Well, and I love, park, I love all the jokes. Like, Spider-Man no, only works as a New York superhero. Park. It's like, uh, if he were in there Topeka, we we he would not be nearly as effective a, a crime fighter. Let's get on top. But again, I, I'm like, I, I, this is another title. I am consistently impressed with what developers are starting to squeeze out of uh, consoles. Quietly, 
Better find a back the, the way. The draw distance, the time mechanics, where Spider-Man's focus like gives you a momentary bullet time effect for you to control what's going on. The, Who would the be dumb enough to rob fists to state sale? You navigate and control this stuff with graphics that look really good. Yeah. Is very impressive developer work. And I know a lot of people that are just playing this game right now just excited to run around New York City yeah. as Peter Parker. Definitely. Well, how hilarious. Like, again, I, I want to call it they built in a Yuri Lowenthal mode where he, like, Spider Man will interact with New Yorkers. Yeah. And, and in a very way that it feels honest to I New Yorkers, like, wouldn't patience. be phased by some dude running around in where red tights. Is the how file. Creepy. There's someone else here. They must have taken it. Those masks. Who are these guys? This looks so good. There's no one here but us. We will find the file. Or you will die. This is bad. They'll kill her if I alert them. I need to pick oh, them I've off. I've definitely silently. been watching too much Great British Bake Off because the teeth Yuri, on the mask look like a. The mermaid. silent alarm is legit. Here we mask go. Got a laugh hostage. from Christian. Looks like a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Sound guy just gave Copy me a that. chuckle. Sending units your way. Stuck Keep the situation on that from joke. getting worse <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> Can do. <laughs> Also, shout out to Tara Platt, who voices Yuri in this game. Oh, yeah. I, the, the, the husband and wife dynamic duo. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm dropping down. Ooh, don't quiet. touch the art. Silently defeat the enemies. You want to try some combat? You haven't tried any combat in I this yet, no, right? I haven't. No, I've only done World Exploit. Okay, I'm going to okay. wipe off the controller because I'm a, I'm a sweaty hand gamer. It's very gross, but I'm just going so, to do I, that before I hand it to you. And again, if any character that we would want to... Got to do this quietly. Don't want to alert the others. Yeah, a lot of square. R2 and square. You should be okay with those. Use R L2 to aim at the floor but I want to aim at him. What am I doing? Oh, and I'm used to inverted. So even oh, this no. is not going to be. Oh, no. What am I? No, wait. What am I with the square? Wait, what is happening here? Yeah. What's, what's going on here? Oh, hey, Leo's arms are shaking. Oh, hey, Leo's got... here. Hey, no, bring, bring it over on bring it over on the side. Come on, come on, Say come on, what? Leo. Say what? Hey. Oh, man, this is a gigantor chocolate cake. You so, are. <laughs> Trisha has to eat all of this for her birthday right Perfect. now on camera. Um, happy Aww, birthday. Oh, thank you, guys. That's so nice. I mean, we, we had the monster cake for my birthday, so I thought it was only fitting that. So make a wish. Oh, my goodness. Um, I wish that Spider-Man someday is available for PC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she didn't so deserve it. So it's never going to happen. It's never going to come there to PC. There you go. It's on and my it's call. all Trisha's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys so much, though. That's super, super nice. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Good, and good time. We're all a little bit older, but that doesn't mean we can't swing through New York City An as Spider-Man. Another successful trip around the sun, right? Indeed. So it's always good times. High five, Up sir. Top. High five! Right. I'm gonna eat some of this. No, so definitely pieces. pick up. I'll, I'll I'll wrap up some of the uh, the the get get back to playing. This eat, feels eat some like cake. what I do at home. You're just giving me <laughs> massive amounts of chocolate and video games. Good times. Thank you. How could you go wrong? Hashtag so Friday night. I, I am getting the signal that we should mm -hmm. wrap this up. I'm gonna let Trisha play uh, while you talk out some more of this. Uh, thanks to the New Egg Plays team for letting us hop onto their Spider-Man save game here. So we didn't have to start at the very beginning, but we only just made it to the objective. So we're gonna keep letting that go. You can watch the New Egg Plays team on twitch.tv slash Newegg and see them playing Call of Duty Black Ops for uh, WWE 2K18 and Golf with Friends in their upcoming live stream. So definitely check that out. Uh, we already talked about some pre-built PCs we have available from Asus and MSI, but make sure you also check out the Corsair One Gaming Tower. 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 1080 GPU for $100 off, along with a $100 gift card, as well as the Optane Powered Gamer Extreme from CyberPower PC. Good times there. If you are upgrading your build, it's probably time to upgrade your keyboard and monitor too. You'll want the best of the best after all. So uh, take a look at the Cooler Master Master Keys Pro with Cherry MX Brown switches available for $40 off. It's a super fancy mechanical RGB keyboard for less than $100. So that's gonna go fast. We also have the heavily discounted ASUS MG28UQ 4K monitor, uh, gaming mouse pads from Cooler Master and ASUS, and the always popular Nebula GX30 headset from Rosewill for less than 25 bucks. Good 
times. And finally, a deal I'm super psyched about, the Klipsch R15PM speakers and project turntable package. I might actually oh, be fun. buying this. That's not just in the script. Uh, yeah. This is a fully functional turntable system that doesn't require a preamp or receiver and no need to mess with counterweights or skating adjustments. All you do is plug it into an outlet and you're good to start playing vinyl. That makes me happier than it really should. So you can pick this up today for an insane so discount of $559 off the normal price. And that means you can pick up a fully functional, high quality turntable and speaker package for, uh, for only $240. So you don't want to miss out if you so wanted to have that audiophile vinyl listening experience. You definitely want to check that out. Plenty more deals. Make sure you head over to Newegg now, uh, newegg.com slash Newegg now. Take advantage of them all. Whether you're looking for pre-built pre PCs, upgrades, or hard drives and console deals, Newegg is the place you'll find. You'll want to find them. Newegg is the place you want to go. How's it going? With the uh, it's good. I actually haven't played through these tutorial parts before, so I'm like, what does it want me to do? I'm just used to messing around in New York City, but I'm figuring it out. It's surprisingly little swearing, so I'm assuming that she's doing really well. <laughs> so uh, that's going to do it for Newegg Now this week. Remember, you can still take advantage of all the deals on Newegg.com slash Newegg Now for the rest of the day or while supplies last. Uh, thanks to all of you out there for watching. Thanks for uh, to, to Seagate for dropping by to talk yeah. about NAS systems that Trisha needs to buy. I do. And uh, big hard drives. And the drives. switch that you need to and buy. And the switch that I need to buy, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll, uh, we need to have them back on to talk about yeah. storage in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah, we'll be back uh, next week episode. to talk to Acer and taking a look at the Gear Pro Gamers Use. Nice. So this is the new egg now, and now you know. Bye, guys. Bam. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>